Yeah, so my name is Kees Huizinga. I'm from the Netherlands. Uh, and I've been farming in Ukraine now for nearly 20 years. So that's, uh, yeah, that's who I am. <laughs> I'm a farmer. Okay. Tell us how this war has affected your family. Um, yeah, it's only, not only affected my family, it affects the whole of Ukraine and it, it actually affects the whole world. Um, so, but uh, on the 24th, yeah, the 23rd, my wife had birthday, so the, the, the things are still hanging in the room. In the 24th in the morning, uh, they started to throw some bombs on, on ammunition depots in Ukraine. And then uh, during the day, I mean, it was a little bit of panic, of course. And then um, towards the end of the day, we decided that my wife and my kids, they would leave for, uh, for Romania. We have a friend uh, there and we have friends on the border. Um, so they left. Yeah, so we, they are now, uh, today they're flying to the Netherlands from Romania. And uh, so we are split. I mean, but we've been split now for, what is it? Five, six days now. So, I mean, that's, that's happened before, but not uh, because of this reason. So that's a little bit strange. Why did you decide to stay behind? Uh, yeah, we have a farm here, you know, we have 400 employees. Um, I mean, they're all doing their best and I mean, we are like one team. So, uh, you know, you just can't leave, uh, can't leave your team. I mean, everybody's staying behind. And we have uh, also 200 cows which need to be fed and milked uh, every day. So, um, yeah, I mean, if I leave, then everybody can leave, yeah? Mm -hmm. How is this, um, t tell a little bit about what's happening in your area. Oh, um, here in the area, no, no fighting is happening. I mean, on the first day, like 30, 40 kilometers, kilometers south of here, they blew up some ammunition depots with some long range missiles. Um, and I think, I mean, using my farmer's logic, some of those ammunition, which was lying there just flew through the air and landed in the city of Uman, and it killed a few people there. Um, but I mean, that's the only thing really happening here. But I mean, all the people, everybody is really nervous and everybody's preparing uh, roadblocks and this uh, territorial self-defense forces are being uh, created under the command of the army. Of course, it all has to go very fast. So people, sometimes it's a bit chaotic, but um, but every everybody does it with the same goal, you know, to defend to defend uh, Ukraine or 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 to defend our area. But um, uh, so in general, people are nervous, afraid, but uh, yeah, determined. I would say as well, panicked. You know, there is uh, a lot of misinformation uh, going around. Um, I think that's also probably belongs to a war, but it's also part of a strategy, I think, from uh, Russia. I mean, they're very good in spreading misinformation around the world. So uh, they, they, it's 100% sure they use it here as well, you know, to create panic and chaos so people will uh, surrender. But uh, as I can see it now here in the area and the news I get from all over Ukraine, from fellow farmers from all over Ukraine, the, op the opposite has happened. You know, nobody is uh, surrendering. How is this affecting what happens on your farm on a day-to-day -day basis? Uh, yeah, so we are not so busy yet on the fields. Um, I mean, we're spreading a little bit of fertilizer, so we need a lot of guys in the... We don't spread at night, for example, because, you know, then the big tractor with this full light, I mean, that's like, uh, it's like daylight, you know? <laughs> so, uh, and that would probably, and the lit lights in all the villages are switched off and uh, all the towns are switched off. So it's completely dark outside. So if you would drive around with a tractor with all lights switched on, that would attract attention from maybe drones or whatever is flying around. I mean, that's part of the panic, I think, as well. But during the daytime, we try to spread as much fertilizer as we can. And um, with, with, with the, we have a lot of guys who went to the uh, army um and who are in the territorial like kind of self-defense uh, forces i mean where they have to <clears throat> fulfill their their, uh, 
their duty, I would say. But we try to uh, finish repairing uh, planters and cedars as good as we can. But we, we didn't get all the spare parts yet, so we have to put, put back all spare parts uh, back on the machines. Um, supplies of uh, fuel and fertilizer is difficult now. Um, not all the seeds are there yet. So, uh, I mean, we have enough to get started. Um, you know, in the spring, is, I mean, it's busy, but we don't need so many people. So, you know, I, th I hope we can manage the spring. But, uh, you know, it's also, again, in the spring, we work day and night. And if we can only work daytime, that's, uh, I mean, then we can only plant half of the farm, for example. So, uh, it is it is affecting us, but I can't, I, I still can't completely oversee um, how bad it is. And, uh, but that will be clear in the in the coming days, you know. If everything stops today, we will will we'll be all be fine. But uh, if it discontinues for uh, for a few more weeks, we will we will be we and all our farmers in Ukraine will be way behind. So you you said you're losing some of your employees to the army. Yes. Yes. Okay. And ha how many hectares acres are you farming there? We are around uh, a little bit of above 15,000 hectares. I think that's like 40,000 acres or something. Um, and we grow winter wheat, winter barley, winter canola, uh, sunflowers, corn, sugar beets, uh, and soybeans and navy beans. And I remember not, not all that long ago, maybe back in December, you were sharing, uh, there was a very high-tech video of some equipment you were testing on your farm. So this, you know, how does, how does that, is that just all gone right now or what, what happens with progress? Yeah, now <laughs> there's no progress anymore. I mean, uh, you're con constantly trying to, to, um, to implement uh, more modern technology. I mean, it doesn't go as fast as you'd like to, but uh, but it's okay. And, and, you know, we're constructing for the dairy farm to build an additional uh, barn. Yeah, that, that's that's all stopped now, you know, and the, the agronomists, they are now working on a new plan to to do planting as, as cheap as possible, with as, as few inputs as possible, you know, to save as much as possible. Um, yeah, so no, no testing anymore, you know, uh, no experience, experiments anymore, just trying to survive. And uh, yeah, that's not good. That's not good for progress. And that's not good for development. Mm -hmm. How are farmers helping to fight this war? What's their involvement? What's your involvement? Yeah, so uh, yeah, first of all, a lot of employees from farmers all over Ukraine, they, they joined the army um a lot of them voluntarily and also guys who just had to go um and you know we are daily in contact with through our farmers association with uh 50 60 70 farmers from all over ukraine like the most active uh, um, uh, members of this association the total association is like 1100 farmers um so we are in daily contact with them and everybody tries to help as much as he can with supplying food to the army, you know, uh, flour to, to bake bread. Uh, in the south, some guys have been occupied already. They can't get rid of the milk. So they, they give the milk away to the local population and to the town in Kherson and Kachovka and wherever they can come, you know, where the army is not present from Russia. Um, uh, the wiring money to the army, uh, helping with loaders to prepare roadblocks, with excavators, um, uh, welding anti-tank uh, constructions. Um, there was even a video on the internet where uh, a group of uh, farm employees were in the middle of the road with no guns and stopping a Russian uh, a Russian tank. No, I mean, the tank was like a few hundred meters away and they were screaming and shouting at the tank and then the tank turned around and drove back, you know, so all, I mean, 
whatever creativity you have, farmers are using, you know, in this situation. You know, um, when, when I met you back in 2015, we did an interview and one of the things that I remember you saying was that a, a part of what was going on in Ukraine among farmers was that there wasn't a lot of trust between you. It seems like there's a lot more trust between farmers now. I mean, the, the biggest achievement of Putin is that he uh, that he created a, a, a real unity of Ukraine and also amongst uh, farmers. Mm -hmm. What lessons do you think we can learn from, you know, what happened in the 1930s with Joseph Stalin? Whew, that's, a, that's a big one. Um, Yeah, so, I mean, <laughs> suppression is never uh, good, you know. And um, I, mean, I, 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 I mean, in the 1930s, we had a huge uh, famine. Famine, is pronounce it correctly? Fem, famine. 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 We had, in the 1930s, we had a huge famine uh, in Ukraine, artificially created by Stalin. Um, yeah, and we, I mean, it, it was never <laughs> administered uh, very uh, properly, but the estimations are that there is between three and ten million Ukrainians died of hunger in the 30s uh, because all the grain which was produced was transported away, uh, all the cows, I mean all the food was artificially taken away with false uh, arguments and uh, so a lot of people just st died of starvation. Um, so uh, I hope it won't be that bad uh, this year. And I think the world is uh, is more open now. I'm, I'm sure the world is more open now. Everybody can follow what's happening here. Um, but I mean, if the guys, the farmers in the south, which are now occupied, they were already st they already started planting barley, and they stopped it. So you know. Uh, that's already the first signs of uh, of um, that f that farming stops, you know. And uh, I mean, and that can happen all over Ukraine. So uh, I mean, if people don't go back on the tractors and start planting, or if they're not able to, yeah, that, that's that's a hundred million tons. Is it yeah, 100 million tons of food not being produced, you know, in the world? So, and uh, I mean, Ukraine is so is is so big, and so um, so we, there's enough food for the local population, but uh, I mean, it will be a huge gap in the world in the world market if uh, if this doesn't stop fast or soon. One of the, I mean, we're seeing things all over the world about what's going on in Ukraine. And one of the pictures is the flag and the, the colors of the flag actually, uh, their connection to agriculture. Yeah, it's like the, the blue sky in the top and the yellow grain, uh, grain fields underneath. Uh, that's, a nice, that's a strong uh, flag, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a strong symbol. So the, so people around the world need to understand the connection between this war and world food supplies. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, uh, first thing is of course, production here in uh, Ukraine, but it also, I mean, this, the, the, all the, it will also uh, affect uh, Russian production itself. And that's also a huge producer of, uh, of grain, of course, of Russian grain, a lot they need themselves. I mean, from Ukrainian grains and, and commodities, Ukraine only needs like 25, 30% itself, and the rest goes on the world market. I mean, Ukraine is in a lot of top five uh, positions concerning exports of uh, different commodities. Um, yeah, so, but it can affect, and that's, so that's one thing. And another thing is the blockades of the Black Sea, you know, through which a lot of those uh, commodities are being exported to the world market. So they're just not going now. Then not everything stopped. So uh, 
I mean, there's Russian warships uh, in front of the in front of Odessa, and I mean, uh, in and around Odessa, there's these big uh, grain ports. You know, they're also afraid of uh, being hit by bombs, and uh, so it all stopped. You know, that's uh, I, I, I have no idea of the numbers, how many ships per day or per week leave Odessa, but uh, at the moment there's nothing. I saw a video that you posted of your grain storage. So yours, just like anyone else's, is just staying on your farm right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's this grain storage is <clears throat> all, over the, all, all over the country. And uh, yeah, we, no, nobody sells anything to the south. And a lot of farmers uh, sell, uh, sell, provide grain to the local and national feed mills, you know, to, uh, to, I mean, to keep them going, to keep Ukrainian people, uh, uh, to, um, to supply them with food, you know, and to supply the army and supply their soldiers in the front with food. So that's what a lot of farmers do voluntarily. Uh, what what message would you like to share with people around the world? Uh, yeah, this, uh, I mean, all war is completely useless, of course, but uh, in, in not necessary. But I mean, this this war is completely uh, yeah. Yeah, there's no, no words for this. I mean, there's completely no ground uh, to start this war. I mean, Putin might be feeling not safe because of old Soviet and KGB logics, but I mean, it's uh, it's an open world. You know, it's a global uh, community. It's a global market and where everything is connected. I mean, China, Russia, Ukraine, United States, South America, Africa, Australia, everything's connected everything's interconnected and everybody's sharing knowledge and everybody every farmer tries to 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 make his operations more efficient and uh and what's happening now here in ukraine can have can be a huge disturbance in first of all food supplies but second also in the whole global uh, way how we deal with each other, you know? And uh, I mean, it's only been now four, five, six days, you know, so I can't uh, still oversee what's, what can happen or what the results can be. But I mean, they can be devastating for the whole world. 